Hi, this is Simon from Tokyo Productions and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be looking at creating this word cloud effect. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, I'm going to come over and I'm going to import my image that I'm going to be using for this project. Let's have a quick look at our project properties. It's 90, 20, 10, 80, 24 frames a second, and it's six seconds long. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is create some text. So I'm going to come to Objects New Group, select my text tool, and I'm going to type the word forest. Let's increase the size to around 100. Let's center align it, come to its properties, transform, reset parameter. OK, so we need to make an array of words. And to do that, we're going to come to Object, Replicate. And it gives us this rectangle filled with our word. So if we've got our Adjust Item tool turned on, and we've got our overlays turned on, we can use the controls here to adjust the size and position of the rectangle. Something like that, so it's more or less covering our girl here. OK, I'm going to set the arrangement to random fill. And let's increase the number to 150. And now there's just one thing I want to make sure that we do here is we really want to make sure that her eyes and her mouth are covered by our words. So an easy way of doing that is just to click on the Replicate Seed button until we've got that. Actually, one click has done it for me there, but you might need to do it a few more times. There you go. Right, so how does this effect work? I'm going to take this replicator, I'm going to right click, add image mask, and I'm going to use my forest girl image here drag it into the source well here. And to here where it says source channel, I'm going to select luminance. And you can see that we've got the basis of the effect. I have selected luminance here, but we could also try some of the other channels and you can see the difference that that makes. So that's red, that's green, and that's blue. And I think I quite like that sort of look that I'm getting off blue, so let's stick with that. The other thing we can do is we can select our image here. We can come to Filters, Color Correction, Levels. And if we wanted to increase the intensity of the effect, we can crunch down the whites like that, crunch the blacks a bit. Because this is a sort of fashion-based thing, I think we want to keep it nice and sort of soft, something like that. So nice bright whites, but not too heavy blacks, and maybe just get the mids to sit up a little bit as well. Now I also want to point out there are two different ways in which we can look at this effect. I'm going to be going with this one, but I just wanted to quickly point out what the other one is. So I'm going to select my forest girl, right click, duplicate. Let's just remove that levels because we don't want to see that. And let's just turn her on. And then let's right click and add an image mask to her. Let's remove the image mask from the replicator. And then let's use the replicator as the source for the image mask for the girl. And that way we get a full color version of this. And that's quite nice. It's particularly nice if we add in a background. So let's try doing that. Object new group, add object, generators, image generators, color solid. Let's select that group. Let's come to object, send to back. Let's select the color solid, click on here, and let's select a color, something like that. You can see that's kind of quite interesting. Different colors give very different results. We could go for this nice salmon pink, for example. So there you go, that's the alternative way of doing this. I think we're not going to go with this. I think we're going to go back to our original plan. So let's undo all that. Let's remove this here. Let's add our image mask back to our replicator and let's add our 
color corrected forest girl to that. And again, let's select blue as the source channel. And we just need to remember to turn this group back on again, the replicator group. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this replicator lower. The next thing I want to do is I want to look at animating it on and off. So to do that, we're going to come to behaviors, replicator, sequence replicator. So the parameter that we want to influence is opacity because it's a fade effect. And we want to set the sequencing to from because we want to come from zero opacity. So set the opacity down to zero, the sequencing to from. And you'll see that the words grow and fill out the image. So that's all happening a little bit slow. So I'm going to come to frame 50 down here on the timeline. And with my sequence replicator selected, I'm going to come to mark, mark out. And that shortens the sequence replicator. So it's just running for 50 frames. So our animation animates in over those 50 frames. Let's call this replicator sequence in and then right click duplicate. And let's call this one sequence out. So this second one, we're going to change the sequencing from from to to. So we want to fade down to zero opacity. And we just need to come to the end of the timeline. And with this sequence out selected, we want to come to mark move selected out point. And you'll see down here that that's moved that sequence out behavior. So it ends at the end of the project there. And so now it grows in and it grows out. So you'll notice it's growing in and out from the center. And the reason for that is that our replicator has got an origin and it's by default it's set to center. But we could, for example, set it to upper left. And then you'll see that it grows in from the upper left and then grows off in the opposite direction. So you might want to have a play with that. What we also want to do is we want to come down here to the scale randomness and let's set that to something like 100. So we have different sized words and I think that's just a little bit more interesting. So the next thing I want to do is I want to layer this up. So this is my lower layer and I'm going to right click, duplicate and I'm going to call this one middle and I'm going to right click, duplicate could call this one upper. So my upper layer, I'm going to twirl open the position so I can get to the Z position. And I want to set the Z position to 200. And middle layer we'll leave where it is. And the lower layer we're going to set to minus 200. What we also want to do is we want to mix up these replicators a little bit. So we can do that by coming to their replicator seed. So I've got the lure selected there. I'm going to hit, hit the replicator seed and it gives us a different arrangement of those words there. Let's do the same for upper. Hit that a few times like that. Don't forget we can also just adjust this size if we want. Let's increase that one out just a little bit like that. Just so we've got something a little bit different. Right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a camera and you'll be able to see the reason for my having offset those layers. So add object, camera, switch to 3D. Let's make our background 2D. Let's turn off this extremely unhelpful inset view. And now let's just add some animation to this camera. So select the camera, behaviors, camera. Let's add a sweep behaviors, camera, let's add a dolly. Let's set the dolly distance to 250. So that's zooming in on it. The sweep, we're going to set the start to minus 15 and the end to plus 15. We're going to call that sweep Y. We're going to duplicate it, right click, duplicate. We're going to call this one sweep X. So we're going to change the axis from swivel Y to tilt X. And we want to start at zero and 15 is a good end. Let's turn off this 3D overlay, get rid of that grid. Let's come back to the beginning and let's press play. 
And now I think you can see that we've got some interesting parallax on those three different text layers. It would help if we had a little bit of variation in the words. So I'm going to select my original forest text there. I'm going to right click duplicate and I'm going to type something like fragrant to fit with our fashion theme. And let's add this word to our upper layer, for example. So let's add that to that upper replicator, replicator cell there. We can call this one fragrant. So we know we've done that. There we go. So now we've got forest and fragrant. We might also want to just change up the direction of these animations. So let's select the lower and let's have lower right for that. And maybe for the middle, let's come back to selecting center. See how that all plays. So that's kind of quite interesting. So another thing we can do is to select our upper layer here, come to properties and let's just turn on drop shadow and see what that does. Let's open up the controls and I'm going to set the opacity all the way up to 100 so we can see it a little bit more clearly. And now we've got this rather interesting textural effect there. Let's do the same thing with middle. Turn on drop shadow. Let's turn the opacity up to 100. You might not want it for something like this, but something that's more sort of newsy, it might work nicely. Gives us more of a sense of depth and I think that's quite nice. So there's one other trick I want to show you, and this is a really interesting one and probably something you haven't yet come across in motion. At the moment, we're just using two different word sources for our text. But what if we wanted a more interesting network of words? I'm just going to turn off upper and lower and let's focus on middle so we can see how this new effect is going to work. I'm going to come to the top here. I'm going to come to object new group. Let's make this group 2D. I'm going to come to add object generators, text generators, and we're going to select file. And if I come over to the generator tab of this file, you can see that it's asking me to load up a file. And the file that it's asking me to load up is a text file. So over in text edit, which is obviously a little application that you have in your applications folder, I've made this word list. There's 12 words in there and I've saved it out as word cloud text. And what I can do is I can navigate to this file and we can use it as our source text. And the only important thing to notice is that each word is separated by a carriage return. Okay, so let's minimize that. Let's come to file, come to browse, and let's browse to our word cloud text, open it up. And let's just solo this group so we can see what's happening. And to come to the format for this, let's just reset that size to 100 as before. Let's center align it. And I want to show you what happens if I press play. So what this is doing is it's cycling through the words in my list. We could cycle through them at random by hitting the random button. But that's not really important for our purposes. We can leave that off. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as the replicator cell source for my middle layer. So I'm going to call this one file so we know we've used the file for that. And I'm going to take my file generator and I'm going to add it to the particle cell like that. And let's unsolo that layer, turn that off. And now you can see that we're getting the words that are being spat out by that file generator. But if I press play, you can see that those are cycling through the words. And that's not what we want at all. We want to be using that to create an array of different words. So in order to do that, we're going to come to our replicator here. Here under cell controls, we're going to turn off play frames. And instead, we're going to select the random start frame button there. Turn that on. And now I think you can see that I've got an array of different words 
all being generated by that file. And that's pretty cute. We could update that file and these words would update accordingly. Now you might be tempted to use this on all three layers, but I would recommend that you don't. I think you'll probably find that motion grinds to a halt very quickly if you try that. So that's why I had these other two layers. Let's turn them back on. I just used a single word for those. So there you go. Now, now we've built this all up, what we can probably do is we can thin it all down a bit. So we started with 150 points for everything. So my upper layer, I think I'll reduce to 50 points. My lower layer also, let's reduce that now down to 50 points. So we get more of a sense of these varying words from our middle layer. And maybe let's just increase the width of our middle layer so those words stand out a bit more and maybe reduce the width of the other two layers because we really just want these to help fill in the center and also help give us that parallax effect. So let's come down to our color solid and have a look at that. Maybe um, let's go for something much darker on that. And what we'll notice is that there's an edge at the top here. You can probably see and that's because we need to increase the size of our image just a little bit. Our girl here. Let's just come to her scale, increase that. So that's a little bit larger. What I've also done there is I've shown you what it's like if we really increase that Y sweep a lot. And I've gone for 60 there. Let's go for 45 or something. You can see that that reveals very clearly our three separate layers. And that's quite, quite an interesting way to possibly bring this on or off or whatever. And there's one more thing I wanted to point out, which is that we can very easily change the color of this. If we come to color correction, colorize, add that to that group there. And we can really make this any color we like. So really from this point, it's over to you to see what you can do with this effect. I hope it's been an interesting tutorial. Thanks very much indeed for watching.